so I'm really nervous. <laughs> um, okay. So hi everyone, my name is Ronnie, and today I am 19 months clean and sober. And, and I just want to thank you all for coming and caring and yeah, just listening. So I okay, so it starts off like at the beginning kind of a little bit and okay here we go. Okay, I was <laughs> I was born in Dos Palos, California in 1988, which makes me 28 years old. My grandparents didn't approve of my parents' marriage, and it turns out they were right. As my dad introduced meth to my mom, which began a lifelong addiction, she still uses this to this day. I was born a year and a half into their marriage, but my dad, he wasn't a bad guy. He had just been through so much, including losing his leg in the Vietnam War. He married my mom at age 40. She was only 17. My mom had her share of troubles as her twin sister was killed in a car wreck when she was 16. Until I was five years old, my sister and I would be dropped off by my mom with my grandparents, which they preferred, because at times they would find us in motels with rotten bottles, naked and dirty, with my mom passed out on a bed. My grandparents did their best to keep us from my mom. The last time they came to get us, my three-year-old sister was bruised in a dirty diaper surrounded by passed out men. We were both half naked and hadn't eaten in days. From that day on, my grandmother fought to keep us from our mom and would even give her money to keep her away, knowing that by doing that, my mom would just buy drugs. My grandma was just trying to protect us. One night when I was seven, my grandma took us to the May Day Fair in Las Vegas for my birthday. We left early, which made me upset as any birthday kid would be. <laughs> and during my tantrum in the car on the way home, I kicked the steering wheel, which caused us to veer into, which almost caused us to veer into a canal. My grandma hit me to snap me out of my tantrum, which broke my nose. Before taking me to my mom's, she took me home, cleaned me up, and when I saw my mom, I was hysterical, which made her hysterical. And for some reason, I bit her and I wouldn't let her go. She, she punched me in the face to get me to let go. I ended up wandering back to my grandma's house that night. The following morning, my grandma took me to the police station and used my visible bruises to get custody of my sister and I. My mother went to jail for child abuse, and for the next five years, my mom's life spiraled out of control. On more than one occasion, my grandma would call the, call the police when my mom would try to see us, and the police would beat my mom in, the front, in front of us. Fast forward a few years and I began messing up in school and by the fourth grade I was expelled from my first middle school for fighting. I went to a continuation school where I started smoking weed with other bad kids and I caught my first case when I was 15, went to juvenile hall. I was released with an ankle monitor which I cut off to go live with my mom 45 miles away. After a month there, I walked in on my mom smoking meth when she said, Ronnie, do you want to try this? She promised it would make my life better. A month later, she kicked me out in the middle of the night, barefooted in the rain. I walked her 20 miles and called my grandma. She brought me back to Dos Palos, where I went back to juvenile hall for 90 days for cutting off the ankle monitor. My decisions didn't improve, and I, fought my, and I found myself back in juvenile hall until I turned 18. I did okay for a year and a half, even went to Merced College for a little bit. I met a man, had a baby boy 10 days before I turned 20. I ended up cheating with my son's father with his cousin for meth, so I dropped my son off when he was like eight months old with my grandma and just said, you know, I don't want to do what my mom did to me, you know, so I just like dropped him off and like didn't look back for eight years. So. At this point, I didn't care anymore. On December 11, 2013, just before my 23rd birthday, I was released from prison after nearly four years for multiple convictions for burglary. My freedom didn't last long before going back to jail for assaulting my boyfriend. This was my second strike. The day before my trial, the district attorney and the public defender offered me a deal. Take, a, take the strike, do a year program, and accept three years of felony probation. I went back to my cell, something told me to take the deal, maybe, just maybe, I could do something different with my life. 
Miss Becky and Miss Shirley met me halfway in Selma at Baskin Robbins. <laughs> they took me to Walmart to buy some clothes because I was, yeah. <laughs> and then they brought me to the House of Hope to be my family. There, they were there for me. They showed me genuine love. Becky show, shared her story with me and I decided to stay here in the program. I wanted what she had. She was happy. In the year of the Life Change Academy, I got my parenting certificate and anger management certificate. I also learned about the Bible and all the major events in it. I started interning at the Shelter of Hope and it became my passion. The, word, the week before I graduated, they offered me a job there. I was thrilled with the opportunity and I loved my job. Since then, in addition to my job at the shelter, I'm attending domestic violence classes and other recovery meetings. I'm currently trying to get a home church where I can stay connected in my faith in God, which has grown immensely. I am also building a relationship with my son and my grandparents. I thank God for all the things that have happened in my life, and I believe that without God and the program and the people that are now my family, I would still be lost. Thank you.